So, for a while, I've been considering whether or not I should talk about this. If you saw my original video on Russell Hartley, you know I talk a lot in that video about outrage marketing and how so many people like Russell Hartley use outrage marketing and the fact that they're an unlikable character who says outrageous things to get famous on the internet basically or to sell things, just get their name out there through people talking about them. So after my series on Russell Hartley, I did not want to talk about him anymore, but I just have to share this with you guys. I really do. It's, I can't not share what has gone down because the tea. So about three months ago, I want to say now, it's been a few months. So about a few months ago, I did a series on Russell Hartley where I mainly dived into his how to text women course and what a load of BS it is. In these videos, I reacted to some of the amazing high intellect knowledge, knowledge. that Russell Hartley shares in his course preview like this. A lot of girls are low key catfish, right? So they're, they're you know, on, online, they're hard tens easy but in reality the reality is there's like six is and this do not for the love of god do not expect her to guide the conversation do not respect expect her to be you know funny very intelligent don't expect her to be funny or intelligent or an initiator in the conversation great stuff no and the thing is, outrage marketers only like outrage marketing when people are talking about how bad of a person they are, not how bad the thing they're selling is. So Russell Hartley did not like my course. And he made that very clear through multiple attempts trying to take down my video and sending me a cease and desist. Now, that's the main reason that I'm talking about this whole thing today, especially. I wouldn't want to give Russell Hartley more attention if I thought it could possibly help his business. But since it's very clear he really did not like my last two videos, since they, in his opinion, hurt his business, well, why not make more of these? <laughs> So a few weeks after making that video, I receive this email from apparently Russell Hartley's lawyer. The thing is, in this cease and desist letter, there are so many instances where Russell Hartley and his lawyer try to threaten me to get the video taken down. They start off by saying, the following correspondence is intended for Madison Harnish, alias Madison, my maiden name, which isn't an alias, it's my maiden name. Um, so that's incorrect. If you are not Madison Harnish, please disregard this email. Attached is a copy of a formal cease and desist. The details of the letter are outlined in this email. Additionally, a notarized copy of this letter has been sent to blank, an address. This is an address that I used to live at. And I'm like, it's kind of funny because the address is completely incorrect at this moment. And I'm like, are you trying to intimidate me through providing my address? But in turn, you actually provided a false address, making this whole thing look ridiculous. Like, did you try and make yourself look like super detective who could bring up my alias and my address? In fact, both of those are incorrect. Like, it just... So right off the bat, it was clear to me at least that this person is trying to intimidate me, trying to make it look like they have all this information on me, when in reality, all of this information is fake and they just kind of look ridiculous. So the thing is, the videos that I made on Russell Hartley were entirely fair use. They were reaction commentary style videos reacting to a publicly available free preview of his How to Text Women course. There have been a ton of cases that have settled that content like this is fair use. But either way, I think a lot of what I said hurt Russell's feelings, so he decided to go ahead with a cease and desist anyways. And in this cease and desist, it says, we are writing to notify you that unlawful copying of Get Coaching Inc. proprietary information and unauthorized distribution infringes upon my client's exclusive copyrights. No. Yeah, such proprietary information like this. Just... Make sure you're, you know, you know, playfully teasing her. You need to talk to her kind of like she's your little sister almost. Sorry. Absolutely has to be protected. We must protect this information. It is too valuable, too unique. Never heard anything like it. Even though it was a publicly available preview on his website. 
we must protect this information. Accordingly, you are hereby directed to cease and desist all copyright infringement. Under United States copyright law, how specific? Get Coaching Inc.'s copyrights have been in effect since January 1st, 2020. All copyrighted aspects of Get Coaching Inc. are copyrighted under U.S. state copyright law. Very specific. Never explicitly details what exactly in my video constitutes as copyright infringement or what aspect of U.S. state's copyright law applies to my video, like just extremely vague overall. So I'm already sussing out this cease and desist. So then he goes on to further try and intimidate me by saying, under 17 U.S.C. 504, the consequences of copyright infringement include statutory damages of between between $750 and $30,000 per work. Yeah, because I'm definitely going to have to pay $30,000 for reacting to Russell Hartley's course of valuable information and works of art and damages of up to $150,000 per work for each willing infringement. Russell Hartley, How to Text Woman Course, too valuable. We cannot have this stuff replicated, guys. If you continue to engage in copyright infringement after receiving this notice, your actions will be evidence of willing infringement as well as your social media tweet. So I rarely use Twitter. I have to start using it more. Like, let me know if you think I should start using Twitter more. I just, I don't know why, but I rarely use it. So the whole part about the social media tweet makes me wonder if Russell had this sent out to a lot of other people who did videos on him. And is trying to take down just the content he doesn't like. Like talking about how he's misogynistic and his TikTok content is gross is okay because at least that brings traffic to his website and his profiles. At least misogynistic men will be like, oh, that sounds interesting. He sounds like he knows what he's talking about. I'm going to go to his page to learn more. Or just very vulnerable men who maybe want to meet women and think that he is some sort of playboy when he's very clearly not actually a playboy. I almost had a threesome last night. Literally the only thing I was missing were two other people. But when people actually talk about his course, when they actually get into the details of his business, that's not okay. Talking about how horrible of a person he is, that's fine. But talking about his course... That's unacceptable. I reached out to Mooncat, an awesome creator on here, who also made a video on Russell Hartley and his texting course. I highly recommend you guys go check it out. I'll have it linked in the description. She did say that he didn't go after her for her video on him and instead made a comment under her music video being like, ha ha, this is so funny. So it's like, okay, publicly, you're okay with acting as if everything's cool. You're just taking it as a joke. Aha, so funny, guys. But then privately, you're like, you must take this video down. Like, come on, dude. We demand that you immediately cease and desist your unlawful copy and distribution of Get Coaching Work and provide us with prompt written assurance within 10 days that you will cease and desist from further infringement of Get Coaching Works. If you do not comply with this cease and desist within the time period, Get Coaching Inc. is entitled to use your failure to comply as evidence of willful infringement and seek monetary damage damages and equitable relief for your copyright infringement. In the event you fail to meet this demand, please be advised that Get Coaching Inc. has asked me to communicate to you that it will contemplate pursuing all available legal remedies, including seeking monetary damages, injunctive relief, and an order that you pay court costs and attorney fees. Your liability and exposure under such legal actions could be considerable. Is that a threat, bro? Before taking these steps, however, my client wished to give you one opportunity to discontinue your legal conduct by complying with this demand within 10 days. Additionally, a notarized letter has been sent to the following address. Once again, in big letters, my old address that I lived at, I want to say five years ago, six years ago great researching work. The whole cease and desist letter came across as if they were trying to be super intimidating and like, oh, so scary. But um, in reality, it did not work that way because I do not comply with scammers. And the thing that frustrates me about this whole situation the most is as fun as it is to make fun of Russell Hartley and this ridiculous course that he's selling and talk about how absurd some of the comments he makes about women are, reality is 
People are getting scammed by these courses. Desperate men, especially, who maybe have trouble on the dating scene or don't know how to talk to women and want to learn and are struggling in that area, will turn to people like Russell Hartley and buy their course. People are getting scammed by this. And I think the reason why Russell Hartley wanted my video in particular to go down is because I, as a woman, as a married woman, he's made it very clear lately that he has some sort of interest in marriage <laughs> with his recent content. Why you shouldn't get married. Should you get married? Just because you're the man does not mean you're taking more risk when getting married. But I, as a married woman, react to the course and talk about how ridiculous a lot of it is and how just blatantly inaccurate. And by doing that, that prevents more people from being scammed by breaking down why it's inaccurate that prevents more people from being scammed. So obviously that's the video that he wants to go down. So I'm not okay with just joking about Russell Hartley anymore. I'm not okay with just showing how ridiculous he is. For me, this is a scam that needs to stop. And Russell Hartley is trying to control the narrative so that he can look like a misogynistic playboy instead of a snake oil salesman. So I responded to that cease and desist by saying, hello, I would never want to, nor would I, infringe on any copyright in a way that is unlawful. However, in this letter, you did not provide a detailed explanation of how the reaction video I have posted infringes on any copyrighted material in an unlawful manner. The content in which I reacted to was a publicly available preview of the texting course and was not hidden behind a paywall. Additionally, since the content was a reaction style video with commentary, it falls under fair use guidelines. There have been many similar cases that have been determined fair use when a person has reacted to and transformed material in this way. Even so, if you have knowledge regarding the law, fair use, and copyright infringement that I am not privy to, I would be interested to hear it. If you do not and are aware of fair use and are aware that this content falls under fair use, but sent the cease and desist in bad faith, I will be obtaining legal counsel and seeking damages. Lastly, Madison blank is my maiden name, not an alias, and the address you provided in your email is incorrect. Regards, Madison. Basically, I was just trying to say, look, you know that this is fair use. There have been so many other cases where content like this is determined to be fair use. If you're still going to try and go after me knowing that this content is fair use, I will obtain my own legal counsel and seek damages for that. After that, I thought that all of this was done because they ended up sending an email basically saying, yeah, yeah, it was free and publicly available um, this preview course that you reacted to, but it's not anymore. I wonder why, maybe because it was exposed for being awful, but anyways, it's not anymore, but we will drop the claim if you provide preview in the title, which I ended up doing. So I was like, sure, whatever, complied, thought this was over. But after that, I continued to receive multiple emails from YouTube saying that someone has continually tried to take this video down and that YouTube basically looked at it and was like, nah, even YouTube was like, nah, this is definitely fair use and rejected that. But they're like, hey, just heads up, this person is trying to take down your video. We found it to be fair use, all is well. So I have to share with you guys this email sequence that I received from YouTube because I think Russell Hartley had no idea that they sent me this and it is just like the ultimate Karen move. Like I've never seen someone be such a Karen, so I'm going to share it with you guys. So on December 7th, I receive an email from YouTube where they say, hello, we received the copyright infringement notification below. So whenever someone sends in a copyright infringement, the creator gets all the receipts. So I got all the receipts for this. YouTube says, we believe your content is protected by fair use, fair dealing, or similar exception to copyright protection. We are writing to let you know we do not plan to remove your videos at this time. Please be advised it is possible the copyright owner will approach you directly to request removal or take down or take other action, which he already did. YouTube says that the complainant's physical address and phone number have been redacted, but they actually weren't. Yeah, so I got Russell Hartley's full address and everything, which was super awkward, definitely blurring that out. Then YouTube shows me the entire notice where it starts out by saying, thank you for your submission. It is under review to ensure it's valid and includes 
includes all required elements. This is what they apparently send to Russell Hartley. We will reply to this email when we've taken action on your request. You can also check on the status of your takedown request in the removal request tab, which is found in the copyright section of your channel. Then YouTube responds to him again and says, Hi, Get Coaching. We are very concerned that your copyright notification may not be valid for some or all of the videos identified in your notification. Please keep in mind that in many countries, it is legal to use copyrighted works in specific ways without the owner's authorization, particularly for transformative purposes such as news reporting, parody, commentary, or review. Some countries protect such uses under doctrines of fair use or fair dealing, while others allow for specific exceptions to copyright protection. Learn more about fair use in the United States. It literally has a link for him to learn more about what constitutes as copyright infringement. If you still believe your copyright is infringed by the YouTube videos identified in your notification, please explain in detail why you think so. We ask that you provide more detail than was included in your initial notice. Here are questions you may wish to consider. But YouTube's trying to help him out so much. They're like, answer questions like this. How much of your copyrighted work is used? How is the market for your original Original work affected by this? Does this significantly transform your original work, or does it serve the same purpose? Does this fall into an exception to copyright protection? Please note that we may share your response with the uploaders, which they did. And they provided me with way too much personal information on Russell Hartley that I do not need to know. And then Russell Hartley responds to this in the most Karen-esque way ever. He says, yes, this person has never signed up for any of my courses and duplicated the content from areas of my website she should not have access to, which I did, so that's a flaw on your own website, poo on you, without our permission and is attempting to hurt my business. Like, dude, no, I do videos exposing scams, things where people are exploited or taken advantage of for a monetary gain, which I believed you to be doing. This person did this out of malice. I'm just so malicious, yep. Yeah. And not because she bought my product and is objectively reviewing it. The previous video she uploaded on her channel is about how much she hates me, Russell Hartley. Oh, you think I hate you, Russell? You think I hate you? Oh, that's fair. And it is obvious she's doing this in attempt to discredit my company, to intentionally hurt sales. Like, that's the thing that bugs me so much about this, is it's all fine and dandy when people are talking about how he's misogynistic, but when someone's talking about how bad his company is, all of a sudden, so, so hurt, this is horrible, must take this video down. But um, he goes on to say, in an attempt to discredit my company to intentionally hurt sales, as this is the first video that comes up on Google, when my potential customers Google Russell Hartley courses. Thanks guys. Wow. Wow. We did that. We did that. That's actually pretty, pretty awesome. Thanks to everyone who watched that video for helping my video kind of go up on the Google algorithm. We love to see it. Um, hopefully that prevented more people from joining something that might have possibly scammed them. Allegedly. I do not understand how YouTube allows for individuals to steal proprietary information from businesses and display them so brazenly. This paid for product that she's displaying on her video is a product that she stole from my company. It was legit free. It was a free preview as we've already covered in this video. Like you are really going the extra mile here with no proof, evidence, or facts behind it, but good for you, dude. And is displaying it publicly without permission. This person did not purchase or join or enroll in this course as her video title suggests. This is a clearly a case of theft and copyright infringement, and it clearly violates YouTube's guidelines upon reviewing the copyright guidelines in YouTube's detailed video about infringement. How this even needs further explanation is beyond me. <laughs> oh no. Okay, my lawyer is taking over this clear and obvious attack and will send me the details regarding the copyright infringement to send over to you so we can close this matter and have this video removed for the obvious theft and copyright infringement. The only thing YouTube responds to this, the only thing you can tell they are done with his Karen-esque ways, they just say, hello, thank you for your message. <laughs> However, we remain concerned that your copyright notification is not 
not valid for some or all the videos identified in your notification. As a result, the content will remain live on YouTube. Sincerely, the YouTube team. So, wow. Um, <laughs> reading into that, I don't know if Russell knew that I would see those emails, but um, very entertaining, but also concerning. Sorry, bud, this is just a big L for you all around. And um, I, you know, I wish that things could have gone better for you, but I also don't. Sucks to suck. Um, do better next time. Maybe don't sell a scammy course that'll have to review. To me, I'm just like, this is not a good look. This is embarrassing. Trying to intimidate someone, trying to go after them, trying to take their video down just because they spoke up and was like, yeah, this is kind of scammy or this is incorrect. That's just not cool. Trying to scam vulnerable people who are trying to find love, who are trying to connect with people is not cool. I'm just so ready to leave these relationship gurus behind in 2020. No more of this BS scammery in 2021. And I just had to share this really weird legal back and forth that I went through with Russell Hartley. Really embarrassing, dude. You gotta stop it.